Welcome back into Main Street Living. Now, guys, I've been spending a lot more time indoors this last year. Uh, not necessarily uh, my choice, but I've had to revisit some of my old favorite hobbies, like reading books. I'm getting mm. so much time to read now. Yes, it's so important. And, you know, we are just wrapping up Black History Month and heading straight into Women's History Month. And there could not be a more appropriate guest to bridge those two. Jean Heller is an eight-time Pulitzer Prize nominee, journalist, and author. Jean, it's such an honor to have you here on Main Street Living. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you for being here. And I think we are all so curious. Tell us why you decided to get into journalism. You're going to laugh, which is fine. Um, <laughs> I've been laughed at before. Uh, I wanted, I, when, when I first enrolled in the University of Michigan, I wanted more than anything to be an astrophysicist. Wow. And then I took my first course and found out how much math there is involved. And I said, you know, I think I need to switch to the other side of my brain, do something a little more creative. And so I just went searching around. I, I majored in history, um, in journalism, and minored in psychology. And wow, um, I thought, you know, history and psychology would be good attributes to be a journalist, but I wasn't really sure what being a journalist was all about. And then I, in my junior year, I transferred for reasons we don't need to go into. Um, nothing, nothing grade wise. It was personal. Yeah. And um, I went to Ohio State. Yes, Ohio State and Michigan. Um, Big Ten. Big Ten. I'm Penn State, so I'm all for it. Oh, God. You and Paul <laughs> Levine. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, and I, I, they, I, little did I know, but Ohio State had a sensational school of journalism, mm. and I fell into it uh, and embraced it. Had wonderful mentors, um, got a full uh, fellowship to grad school, taught, and um, that amazing. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Jean, um, how did you hear about the Tuskegee experiment? That's a question that we uh, definitely wanted to ask. Like, what was it, and and what was your initial response about it? I disbelief. To yeah. Answer your last question first. I was in Miami Beach. Cover, uh, by that time, I had left New York City, and they transferred me to Washington as an investigative reporter, AP mm -hmm. head. And I was in Miami Beach covering a national political convention. And a very dear friend of mine named Edie Letterer, who now is AP's uh, bureau chief at the UN, um, she was being transferred from San Francisco to London. And she stopped off in Miami Beach and handed me two, two letters mm -hmm. and said, I have the foggiest idea what to do with this, but somebody needs to look at them. So I didn't look at him until I was on the plane home. And then uh, I was very, obviously my curiosity was piqued. One letter was from a young man who was doing part-time work for the U.S. Health Service in San Francisco mm -hmm. with the gay community. And he had heard about this study, or, you know, in vague terms, and wrote to his boss in Atlanta and said, what's going on and his boss wrote back and said it's none of your business it's none of your concern just do your job and essentially wow. don't bother me anymore mm. and when i read that i thought uh oh um there's something going on here yeah so i showed it to my editor who later became my husband and uh he said the guy's taking cognizance of it he's not saying it didn't happen he just said he doesn't want the kid inquiring about it. Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to drop everything you're doing and get on this as soon as we get back to Washington, wow. which, I, which I did. And that's how it happened. Well, were you afraid to write this article exposing the government experiment? Maybe I should have been, but I was probably too young and stupid to know it. <laughs> um, no, I, I was I was never afraid. I was never threatened. Yeah. Or did I ever hear anything threatening? 
Wow. Yeah. 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 So, so like when the article was published, um, you know, it went in, you know, went to the front page of, you know, uh, New York times. What was your feeling about that? Cause, cause at that point, everybody is going to see it. This New York times. It was on, mm-hmm. it was on the front page of every newspaper in the country. Yeah. Um, the New York times had a, a policy of not giving bylines to wire service reporters. Then it was AP, UPI and Reuters. Hmm. Now UP, UPI is kind of gone. Um, so when this appeared on page one, I had always told my friends that if I ever got a byline on page one of the New York Times, I would retire. But this seemed, since I was 23, just a little bit premature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I know what you think. <laughs> and so, you know, um, some people, sorry to I interrupt, think, some people don't know what the experiment was. Uh, yeah. Do you mind briefly explaining that? Uh, the U.S. Public Health Service had selected 600 people, men, from Tuskegee, Alabama, who had 299 of them had syphilis, mm. that they had, they were not deliberately infected. They had acquired it the way anyone does. And 301 were controls. They did not have the disease. And they basically totally withheld treatment from the 299 men to see what would happen and to autopsy them after they died to see if syphilis affected black bodies Mm. differently than white bodies. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, wow. Um, I remember the first time I heard that and, 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 you know, it was it was definitely a shock, but it's you know it's so many you know it's so many things that we don't know and things that happen. Um, and from what I understand, all this happened in the early 1970s uh, when female reporters, uh, uh, you know, not so common, especially in investigative reporting. Um, what was it like, really briefly? And have you're about, you seen to, you're about to meet one of my cats. Oh, I love that. Oh gosh, Hi. Love it's girl. totally fine. We're pet friendly. I've got four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so if the cat doesn't answer this question uh maybe you can answer uh like have you seen a change over the years gene really briefly oh, yeah. yeah you mean in the gender yeah in, yeah in the gender breakdown absolutely i mean uh not to mention a competitor if you are competitors but if you look at cnn i mean more than half their anchors are women more than yeah. half their reporters are women i just made a presentation to what is currently AP special assignment team or investigative reporting team that I was an original member of Mm -hmm. and more than, and they're now they're all over the world and more than half of them uh, that were on the zoom call were women. So um, I never, not once that I recall that I ever suffer any kind of discrimination because of gender. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I began to hear about it, uh, I, I was shocked. And then yeah. I began to pay more. Didn't I just tell you to get out? <laughs> <laughs> he wants some attention, too. <laughs> yeah, thank God the other one's not in here, too. <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's totally fine. And you've done so much. I mean, in your story essentially going back to that and shutting down the experiment. Um, what was your response to that? I mean, very why influential. Did, my response to it was, why the hell did it take 40 years for somebody to do this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other response was, I immediately thought of, my God, this started in 1932, way before I was even born. Yeah. Maybe not way before. <laughs> but, um but well before I was born. And you know what was going on in Germany in 1932? Mm. And we had the audacity. I mean, it had to be done. But we had the audacity to go to, please, Maggie, to go to Germany and uh, try work criminals over there while we were doing exactly the same thing here. Wow. Mm. They, yeah. were, they, were, they were brutalizing Jews. We were brutalizing African-Americans. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, and those things, although they are a part of our history, it's, you know, it's the, it's definitely, it's definitely important that we are aware of it. But real, real quick, let's get back on you about you won numerous awards for your reporting and your writing. 
and you've been nominated eight times for the Pulitzer Prize. Huge. Eight times. Now, now you're writing novels. So really briefly, before we go to break, tell us about your books. Oh, the novels. It's a, the novels are a series, a mystery series, Ooh. based on a fictional col newspaper columnist in Chicago named Deuce Mora, and it's the Deuce Mora mystery series. I'm working on number five. Okay. Four of them, four of them are already published. Wow. So you are so busy, and we can't wait to check these out. And so much more to talk with you about, right, Q? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very fascinating. If you don't mind, Jean, can you stay with us a little bit longer? Sure. Absolutely. Great. Great. I don't have, any, I don't have anything to do until f for two hours. <laughs> Perfect. Well, hey, don't go anywhere. We will be right back after the break with more from Jean Heller and a filmmaker who's been uh, working to tell her story as well. So stay right there. <laughs> 